Hi, I'm Melissa. I wanted to share my recovery testimony with you today. Well, I've been sober for 15 years, so praise God for that. Um, I started out as a kid with a lot of anxiety. I was introduced to Jesus Christ when I was eight years old. Lucky for me, there was this wonderful lady who lived down the road from my house, and she was kind of a second mother to me. She took me to church and Bible school, and I accepted Christ when I was eight. But then, around that time, you know, my parents were heavy drinkers, alcoholics. They were um, unstable. They filled me with a lot of instability and uh, feelings of dread. And I just didn't feel like I could count on people to be there for me or do what they said they were going to do. So in order to deal with that, I started binging on junk food. So that was kind of my first addiction, I would say, sugar. So when I was eight, nine, you know, my, I'd come home from school and my parents weren't home because they were at work. Oh my gosh, I just saw a homeless person. I gotta go see him. Um, I gotta go back on my way. But anyway, I just got distracted. Uh, so I would eat a lot after school. I'd just eat bowls of sugar cereal and binge um, and eat whatever was in the cupboards in order to feel okay and to comfort myself when I was alone because they were gone well, they came home from work most of the week, but then on the weekends they would drink, go out to the bars, and um, party with the neighbors. So I learned how to comfort myself with food. And my newfound relationship with Christ wasn't really nurtured because my parents were more uh, private about that sort of thing. They didn't really encourage a lot of outward expression of emotion or anything. So I didn't really nurture my new, new relationship with Christ um, until much later. But anyway, I continued eating a lot until I got to be about 14 and then I had gotten pretty fat and my classmates made fun of me and bullied me and one day I just decided I'm done with this, I'm going to go on a diet. So I restricted myself to 290 calories a day. I don't know how I came up with this but I just I quit eating basically for three months. I would basically eat apples and diet soda and like maybe a piece of lunch meat. That's all I would eat all day. And I lost a huge amount of weight, like about 30 pounds in three months or more, maybe 40, I don't even remember. But then people started recognizing me. People started giving me attention and saying, oh, you look so good, you lost all this weight. And even like boys were asking me to dance at dances and all that sort of thing. So this is what I had been waiting for, just to finally fit in, I guess. So that seemed to be the catalyst of me driving into alcoholism. This anxiety I had, this insecurity feeling of, nobody you know unworthiness all of that so I lost all that weight and then I started hanging with my cousin some of my cousin's friends who are older sounds like the old story right and we started drinking uh, and I was able to start drinking when I was 15 and right away I was a blackout drunk I would drink until there was no more I once I started drinking it was like just compulsive I would just pound beers and you know people would be like you're gonna be sick or whatever but I seem to have this instant tolerance for alcohol I didn't get sick usually but I blacked out almost from the first time I drank I would have severe blackouts I didn't even really know what that was but I would do things and not remember it I would um, you know like be at a party not remember anything the next day I would drive home not remember how I got there so it was very out of control from the very start and I just had no handle on it at all but I thought this is how everybody drinks this is the rite of passage and I just kept doing it so by the time I was you know 18 I was a full-blown alcoholic I would um I even went to work drunk sometimes um I would throw up I would wake up in my own vomit sometimes I would pee the bed embarrassing and I knew this was not normal and I had a lot of shame about it but I didn't want to stop so I my boyfriend when I was 18 told me he thought I was an alcoholic and I thought he was crazy but I didn't try to stop until I was 26 and when I was 26 I had two DWIs in one year over the span of like six months I got arrested twice the second arrest I rear-ended a lady in a blackout hit her ran into her hang on one second my kids need some McDonald's so I rear-ended her uh, one moment. okay it was a serious accident she was injured I didn't remember any of it All right, go ahead. I can I just get two cheeseburgers and two medium fries two cheeseburgers two fries is that 26
that's it. Thank you. Thanks. 746. Okay, thanks. 746? No. Okay, we'll deal with that at the window. Anyway, so this woman was like an angel from God because she told me she wasn't going to press charges. She said her husband had been an alcoholic and she understood and I told her I was very, very remorseful. Actually, I ended up finding out who she was and being able to talk to her after I got out of jail and had an electronic bracelet on my ankle for two weeks. So I connected with this woman and she was very sweet. I still talk to her now. And she was one of those brushes with God that I continued to have throughout my out of control drinking that God was pursuing me and he was trying to get my attention but I continued pushing him away and moving away from him and doing things in my own will. So after that incident though I was scared straight. I did quit drinking for 18 months, went to AA, shaped up, went to intensive outpatient treatment. I did all of that and I quit drinking and I thought oh this isn't so bad. This wasn't hard because you know many people don't have trouble quitting. They just have trouble staying away from it for a lifetime or for you know sustaining that you you can stop but you keep going back to it like a dog returns to its vomit so I quit for 18 months but then prior to the end of the 18 months I started to get resentful feeling self-pity feeling like oh I don't really think I have a problem I never really try to control it all that nonsense and so I started, I just decided I was going to do it, but I was going to keep it under control this time. Isn't that just the hallmark of every addict that says that? So I picked it back up in the spring of 2001 and before very long at all, I was back to my old ways, drinking and driving, blacking out, waking up with strangers, um, doing stuff I would never do when I was sober, kind of another key piece of an addiction you know you become something you never wanted to be so that became the norm again and so a long story short for about a year and a half I was in and out trying to get sober but I couldn't I would stay sober for a month or two and then I'd relapse again and every time I did it was bad it was horrible I it was very impactful and I would think this is the last time this is the end but wouldn't you know it, I'd have another one in me. And you know, I wasn't really trying to pursue God. There was times when I know that he was speaking to me, but I had not surrendered. I had not completely given it over to him or invited him into my problem as I needed to. So this went on until the summer of 2003. That summer I was drinking pretty much nonstop, barely able to keep a job, although I did. And uh, lo and behold, you know, I got together 49 days of sobriety from July 3rd up until August 21st. And that day, August 21st, 2003, I was invited down to the fair by a uh, neighbor guy we had dated before, but anyway, that's irrelevant. We went down to the fair together and somewhere along the drive down there, I decided I was going to drink. I just got it in my head and the switch flipped in my mind and I decided I was going to do it. Hang on one sec. Yeah, so I just said to myself, yep, yep, I'm going to drink, and um, he didn't care. There were 26 minutes. Why? I just got two cheeseburgers and two medium fries. Yep, two dollars, and the fries are four seven eight. Give me your fries, right? Oh, yeah, okay. Thank you. I'll give you your receipt. Oh, okay? sure, okay. All right, so, um, yeah, we, we drove down to the state fair, and I decided to drink, and once I had the thought in my mind, it just, like, the obsession was uncontrollable. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I couldn't turn back, it felt like. It felt like I was just on this runaway highway to hell and there was no stopping me. So, that's what happened. Um, so I got down to the fair, found the beer garden, couldn't wait to find it, started drinking and just off into oblivion in a very short time. I only remember about an hour of being at that concert, Boston. Two medium fries? And two cheeseburgers? Okay, yeah. yeah, thanks. Yeah. You too. All right, I know. McDonald's not the healthiest, but hey, it's Saturday. A treat for the kids, right? Okay, so back to this. Last day I drank, August 21st. I started drinking, and the night ended up being interaction with police, being out of control at the fair. Um, breathalyzer I had a lethal blood alcohol I think it was 0.39 I mean I'm you know I'm like 125 pounds that time I was heavier but still anyway I was way 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 I mean far gone to where people noticed and um, 
I was falling down the stairs, the cement stairs at the grandstand. Amazingly, it didn't like split my head open, but I woke up the next day, I had bruises all over my body, my knee was twisted and swelling, this huge goose egg on it. And worst, worst thing that I can, uh, you know, I, I don't know how to express what that morning was like because I just remember waking up and I'm like in this oh, like horrible motel room some crappy almost like budget motel I don't even know what it was horrid and my friend is there and I you know later on get to hear all the details of the night but that was my very low bottom sexual shame disgust horror all of it I told myself that's it I'm done and I prayed to God begged him to re deliver me from my addiction and I became free that day, as I walked the fairgrounds of the state fair, I begged God to have mercy on me and I repented. I told him I was done, I would not turn back and I haven't for the past 15 years. I have stayed sober and I haven't had a time where I've thought I'm compelled to drink. So I've been free of it. I wanna help other people get free. I, I, you know, after that I started, so I started getting really into recovery. I, um was a news anchor at the time that I got sober that's another story but all of the casualties of my drinking I was drunk on the air one time actually the first time I was live on the air I was drunk and luckily that was before the age of the internet grace be to God I mean by the grace of God because now you hear about anchors that are drunk on the air and it's all over YouTube and the internet for everyone to see well this was in 2001 I think so I dodged that bullet but anyway um, after I got sober I continued to be a news anchor for a while and then my station was bought out and closed and I was able to do something different so I started public speaking I kind of started my own um, corporate or uh, LLC for doing public speaking I started speaking to large groups at some high schools down in the Twin Cities I started speaking to groups of up to about a thousand people about my story of recovery and then I went back to school to become a licensed alcohol and drug counselor. Eventually I did also get my master's in exercise physiology. That's another passion of mine. But I've been counseling for 12 years and I've been licensed since 2007. So God has placed this call in my life to help people. People get into recovery, give people hope, connect with people. Like that person on the street with the sign that I just saw back there. I gotta go, gotta go circle back to him. But God has put this as my mission. I have, you know, to help the oppressed, to reach out to the struggling, to give them hope and let them know it doesn't have to be like this. You can get free from this addiction. There's hope in Jesus Christ, no matter how bad you think it is. It's never too late. It's never over. You can out, if you have breath in your lungs, it's still hope for you to change. I had to surrender. I had to get on my knees. I had to ask Christ to deliver me. And I had to get back into my spiritual life, number one. I go to church usually twice a week. I read the Bible every day. I pray pretty much constantly. I try to, and I'm not perfect, but I try to put God first before everything else, before any idols or before anyone, anything. I, that's my goal. Um, again, I struggle like any human, but that's my goal. I, my relationship with Christ today, it's the most important thing to me. I would be nothing without it. So I wanna help people just bring them hope and if you're struggling today and you feel like yeah I can't keep going on like this another day I, mean, I know we all have different things that went on with our addictions but a lot of the things are the same the crushing the shame the guilt the bondage the way that you're just in the grips of this thing you feel like you can't get free the feeling of worthlessness all of these things I think are common to most of us and you know we we all have different consequences and all that stuff different bottoms and all that but a lot of the garbage is the same and there's deliverance and freedom in Christ. I just want to bring you hope today that it's possible for you and that recovery is possible. So I'm going to be praying for you that you'll take that step, you'll reach out to someone and that you will share with somebody what you've been going through and that you would just keep your hope alive even if it's just a tiny flame right now, that things can change and things get, can get better. I'll be praying for you.